when you were hired at Krug as a um, tour guide, yes, um, I believe you were the first woman in the valley yes, to, yes. to to have that role. Yes. I think now probably the majority of tour guides are probably I women. I think so. Um, did, did you feel like there was ample opportunity for women in wineries? Well, uh, obviously we were considered the, the newcomers. And often, I guess, one of the directors that would get a man and say, no, this tour. But that disappeared soon. In my case, I realized that we had women that emerged that were stars. They gave wonderful tours. They, gave, they, they told wonderful stories. And uh, at that time, we were also judged of how much wine you sold. Mm -hmm. And they, they sold good wine, the wine right off the shelf. And uh, no, no, we soon had a place. The women had a place. What do you think, why do you think women were so successful as tour guides and in sales, perhaps even more so than, than the men were? Well, it's a very good question. For one thing, I think a woman is charming. A woman tells a good story. And uh, is irresistible, huh? Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, I see. I'm just putting a parade of the women that I, as I say, I put in that star role. And that's pretty much, yeah, charming and irresistible. Can, can you remember some of these women for me? Yes. Their, their names yes. And, and maybe tell me a little about yes. them because. Oh, let me see now. Really, Lily She Thomas. She still is in Napa Valley, and she tells a wonderful story. And uh, I don't think it's always true, but she tells a wonderful story. Then was Gretchen, well, I forgot her last name. She told a wonderful story. And, Well, then you must imagine the women in other wineries that tell the story. Michaela Rodino from San Superi, wonderful storyteller. Um, when did when did you start to see women um, move beyond, you know, the hospitality part of uh, the wine I would industry. say sort of early, mid-70s, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And once they had achieved a certain level, you know, that they told a good story, that they had a good tour and so forth, they just improved. Mm -hmm. Because I know Michaela Rodano went into, yeah. went into winemaking. Yes. Um, uh, and I know some like Zelma Long started in the lab yeah. Uh, yeah. and then went into winemaking. Well, you know, Zelma had it all. <laughs> so, no, I, I think that pretty soon when they started to know the story, and by the story I mean that they could answer questions, you know, they found their place. <laughs> You know, um, I imagine, you know, by the late 60s, early 70s, um, you were well known and well respected uh, at Mondavi and in the Valley overall. Mm -hmm. Did women ever come to you seeking advice? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Didn't they, Zelma? They wanted to know how to succeed what would help them to get a better job? Uh, what should they do maybe to, 
to progress in this whole business. And uh, we had many sessions, and somebody that always gave advice straight on, without compliments, was Robert Mandavi. Hmm. You know, he never made stories. He just said, "This is it, and I, I, I suggest you do it and go for it. Don't be afraid." You know. <laughs> when when women came to you with seeking yeah, this advice, yeah, yeah, yeah. were there specific things you would tell them? Specific pieces of advice that you would give them when women came to you well, seeking? Well, obviously you kind of knew a little bit where they wanted to go. So, And if it was just very open, you'd ask them if the world was your oysters, was your oyster, what would you like? And uh, I then started to think back and say, look, what have happened? There were no women anywhere. Now, we have winemakers. We have winery owners. You know, it has changed, yeah. Think of what we have today. You said half of the women, half of the tour guides are women, but the winery owners, the, the proprietors, the people that are really deeply involved in, in winemaking, all of that is relatively new, 20 years. 